Thanks, Don, for the invitation today. Um, Don asked me if I'd come and visit with you guys a little bit today about uh, about the canals in Dawson County that uh, we're, we're working with. Uh, Jesse mentioned it a, a little bit when he was talking about some of the day plans and opportunities we have. And, and uh, I don't, don't have a lot of slides here, but I'll kind of run through uh, what we are doing. As, as you guys all know, uh, the, the central plot, uh, part of it's fully appropriated, uh, the western third is over appropriated. And because of that over appropriated status, we have to get back to the 1997 level of development in our first increment. Uh, that first increment ends in 2019. Um, for us, that's approximately 3,400 acre feet of water back to the river. We also know there's going to be a, a second increment. Um, beyond, beyond the uh, 1997 level, we still have to get back to fully appropriate. Um, that's roughly 17,000 acre feet of water back to the river for us, 17 to 20,000. We don't have that number exact yet, but it's, it's going to be right in that area. Um, so really what this made our board do is start looking at options um, of how we can get that water back to the river. Um, the obvious options are reduce irrigated acres. Um, there was talk about reducing everybody by 5 or 10 percent of their acres. We'd have the water back to the river and move on. Um, that may have been the easiest short-term solution. Um, the next discussion was about meters. Um, uh, metering all of our wells and allocating water. Well, we have 22,000 wells in the Central Platte and RD. 10 inches is our, our kind of our average crop irrigation requirement. It varies. Our district's fairly long. Um, it varies from probably 11 inches in the uh, far west of our district and probably closer to 8 inches in the far eastern part of our district. So if we were going to go to allocations, and if, um, I think at first there was some thought about that, that uh, maybe that wouldn't be a terrible idea, but I think everyone was thinking, well, it'll be a 12-inch allocation or 11-inch allocation. Well, in all reality, if we're going to cut consumptive use by an inch, that allocation is going to vary across our di district from probably 7 inches to 9 or 10 inches. So, Suddenly that didn't sound like quite as good of an option. Our next option was retire irrigated acres, willing seller, willing buyer. And we've done some of that. This, I'm not going to really touch on that much today, but we've actually put um, just slightly over 3,000 acre feet of water back to the river um, by retiring irrigated acres. Then came from people contacting us and wanting to sell their water to us. And so, so we have done... Uh, I, we've spent just slightly over $4 million putting 3,000 acre feet of water back to the river, retiring acres. But that's a long ways from 20,000 acre feet of water back to the river. The option we settled on was the conjunctive management of surface water and groundwater. And Jesse touched on that a little bit right at the end of his slides. We have three canals in Dawson County. We're fortunate that that's clear in the western part of our district. It's in our over-appropriated area where we have to kind of back up the train, so to say. Um, there's actually, uh, I believe, MPPD owns three canals in that area, and there was four privately held canals in that area. Um, we met with all four of them to discuss our option. Um, in, in looking at management options with them canals, we, we saw the opportunity that to provide groundwater recharge to enhance our stream our stream flows, and protect our groundwater supplies. We know in that area that, um, I believe there's one more presentation following mine, and we saw earlier some of the static water level information. It, it's pretty obvious where there's surface water applied, we don't have much for groundwater appliance. And, um, and so we had a desire to protect that, because it's a lot easier for us to protect that surface water right and not have the declines than this is over regulation. Um, it also provides enhanced flows to the Platte River by diverting and retiming excess flows to the river. Jesse touched on that in 2011. Uh, was kind of the first opportunity that uh, these canals had, had taken advantage of that situation. It also provides enhanced flows to the Platte by re returning natural flow irrigation rights. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about quite a bit today. It increases flows to the river and not ret retire from irrigated acres. Our goal when we started this was to keep everybody whole as we move forward and putting water back in the river. 
And this project has accomplished that so far. As I said, there was four canals. The first one we dealt, dealt with was the Six Mile Canal. It had been diverting water since 1894. Um, it was a fairly six mile canal, kind of explains it. It was actually six miles long. Um, I believe they had 1,666 acres under that entire canal. Uh, there was one individual still taking water out of it. We actually purchased their water right and moved it to the 30 mile irrigation district. Um, that canal is closed, it no longer exists. <coughs> Um, the other three canals we, we met with and uh, worked out management agreements with them. Our management, the part of the agreement was is that, that uh, we would rehabilitate their existing canal. Most of these canals were, uh, I believe one of them was right at 100 years old, the other two were, were well over 100 years old, uh, 125, 130 years old. Um, they were in need of repairs and in need of maintenance. Um, in exchange for, for doing that rehabilitation, we wanted the opportunity to use them to enhance conjunctive management of our surface water and groundwater supplies. Um, Cozad Ditch Company uh, has an 1894 water right for about 16,000 acres. We have a 30-year management agreement with them. Uh, as a result of that management agreement, we went in and cleared and graded their canal, pretty much completely rebuilt their canal uh, we did 27 miles of, it actually should say grubbing and clearing. We grubbed uh, thousands of trees off of all three canals, actually. Um, the 27 miles would be the total length of, of uh, that canal, but not including any laterals or farm turnouts. Uh, we put 13 new structures, 22 walkways, and 11 Rubicon gates and a SCADA system. Um, we can actually assist the manager of this canal uh, in running this and keeping track of our water throughout the system. Um, from our office in Grand Island. Um, we spent just about $6.6 .6 million rehabbing this canal. Um, the Cozad Ditch, as we were talking, just a kind of a quick overview here, you can see it actually starts in Gothenburg, um, delivers water pretty much straight east and south of there, right north of Cozad, uh, goes five, six miles to the east of Cozad. Just a couple of pictures. This was their, this was actually their original river diversion. Uh, this was their existing one uh, before we started working with them. And really, the only thing we did, this this system was not in too bad a shape. The next picture is going to show. I guess it's going to do that by itself. That that first bay I was pointing at. This comes off of that bay and is just a river return to the river. We have a Rubicon gate here. We can measure that water back to the river. I didn't realize it was set up to go by itself. So, um, but anyway, that's uh, this first gate we come off of. We can kick that water straight down the canal like it always has been, or we can return it to the river once we measure it, divert it, measure it, and take the consumptive use portion of that back to the river. Uh, the next canal we worked with, with was the Orchard Elf Alpha Canal. It actually had an 1898 water right. You're getting about 4,326 acres. We also have a 30-year management agreement with them. It's almost the exact same type of agreement. Um, we pay 50% of their bills, we get 50% of their income, and we get the ability to use their canals in the off-season to divert excess flows and to store water and recharge groundwater. Um, this is a smaller canal, about 11 and a half miles long. We put 20 new structures in it, removed three farm crossings. Uh, we also put some uh, river kind gates. We do not have a telemetry system on this on this uh, system, but we do have a, we have a river kind of the head gates. We can we can measure water that we put back into the river, and <clears throat> excuse me, and we have a river kind of the tail end, so we can we can uh, measure any water that's returned to the river that was not used through the system. Uh, just shy of 4.7 million. Uh, this is the Orchard Alfalfa. As you can see, it's a fairly small cozad. Whoops. This thing don't like it. Cozad's sitting right here. So you can see that just their delivery areas is uh, just right south of Cozad. This was their this was their uh, headworks. This was their river return right here. This was going down the canal. As you can see one of their gates didn't even work. 
Uh, we completely tore that out. This is a whole new system for them. Um, it was uh, not much holding it in there, to be quite honest with you. Uh, this is going down the canal. This is going back down the river. It's a, it's a brand new system, so we can measure. We can actually keep track of what's, uh, what's being diverted and, and what's going back. Um, Orchard alfalfa, again, just uh, a little bit of, of uh, the work that you can see they've done. You can see all the trees in the background. The entire canal looked like that. Uh, this is just looking at, this is one area where a farmer had, had kept it clean, actually. 30 mile irrigation district. Had a 1928 water right. It was the most junior of the, the four we worked with, about 15,000 acres. We actually purchased 50 percent interest in them. They were interested in selling uh, part of their irrigation, their rights, and, and uh, their equipment. We purchased 50 percent interest in them for 1.9 million. We did 26 miles of clearing and grading, 39 new structures. And again, we have two Rubicon split meters in here mainly so we can measure water, so we know what we're putting back to the river instead of what we're putting on the crop. Uh, about $5 million invested in that one. Um, this, this is a pretty good, with 30 mile, this is just to the right south of Brady, right south of the interstate here. But you can, the six mile canal actually, the six mile canal actually would have sat right in here. Orchard alfalfa sets right in here. And then of course, the Cozad Canal. And it's not confusing at all when you go to the Cozad Headgates and you drive to Gothenburg. It only took me going there about three times to not stop in Gothenburg before I or not stop in Cozad while I was headed to the Cozad Canal Headgates. So, um, this is 30 miles Headgates. Uh, there's actually a plaque right here. I believe, uh, uh, they were washed out, I believe, in 1984 because of some flooding, and they've worked with MPPD to, uh, to uh, put in some, some new head gates there. The next picture is just the Rubicon gates. It just sets downstream about 30 yards. Um, this was prior to the Rubicons going in. We, were take, we had them on back order, so it was actually taking water before we had our return gates in. These are just a return to the river so we can measure them. And this is, exact, this is not here anymore. We had a dike around there until we got them gates in there that uh, are electronic measure any water that goes back to them. So um, the, I'll get into more detail as we go on here. So really the process, this is, this is really why this all works for us. The landowner either uses or relinquishes their surface water run. The NRD and the irrigation district reassigns their right to acres that are within the canal service area. The landowners can use that surface water or they can tempor temporarily transfer it back to the canal company from one to 30 years. If it's transferred back to the canal company, we're actually putting that water to a beneficial use by returning it for an in-stream flow for endangered species issues. We're only returning the consumptive use portion of that water. So we're only returning what the crop would have consumed. The remainder of that water is actually put down the canal and used for recharge because that's what would have happened in the past. So we're only accounting for the difference between, and actually it's not quite that clean because a lot of them are pumping groundwater now. So we have to subtract that, the depletions from that groundwater from, from the water we're putting back as well. So there's a calculation on every, on the, every right that we transfer back. So we file the changes with the state and we sell that consumptive use that's going back to the river either to the Platinum River program or a couple of other NRDs that need water because we don't need we don't need this much water right now. We may in the future at some point, but up until 2019 we needed 3,400 acre feet and we've gotten that elsewhere. We're probably going to need this water at some at some point moving into the future for, for second acre Um How do we pay for this? Environmental Trust paid for 20%. Uh, uh, the Nebraska Department of Resources paid for 40%. And this is a little confusing. This isn't quite right. We paid for 40%, and the canals will reimburse us 50% of what we paid. So in the end, the canals will have paid 20%, the NRG would have paid 20%, Environmental Trust, Environmental Trust 20%, and DNR 40%. Um, total project costs and water back to the river. As I said, we have about 6.4 million in the Cozad Canal. Um, our potential water back to the river is 7,000 to 18,000. When we started this process, we were thinking about 7,000 to 10,000. 
Uh, we're seeing a lot more requests to transfer water back to the river than we expected, which is true pretty much for all three canals. Um, when we started this process, the 17.5 was actually our high number that we were hoping that we'd be able to get to to transfer water back. Um, it looks like now, once we get this up and going over time, that, that could be our low end number. So, uh, 30 mile, again, about 5 million. Orchard alfalfa, about 4.7. Coast item is a little bit higher because of the telemetry system and the Rubicon. I think we had 11 Rubicon gates in that system. That added quite a bit of cost to that system. Um, but you can see, you can see our potential back of water, and everybody stayed whole. All of our all of our surface water irrigators that wanted surface water still have it. All of them that wanted to use groundwater have the ability to use groundwater. And any of the surface water, we're actually protecting their surface water right for the future for them. Um, we can put it to a beneficial use by, by putting it back to the river. Um, actually, this is my last slide. Our excess flow, the future projects, uh, we are looking uh, for projects uh, that we can use to, uh, to put more water back to the river in the future if, if we need to. Um, one of the easiest ones, of course, is excess flow <coughs> diversions. Uh, during the non-irrigation season. Uh, we have an excess flow right uh, permit in with the Department of Natural Resources that we're expecting to receive uh, before too long. That will allow us to take any excess flows um, other, than the, other than the irrigation season. We wouldn't be able to take them during the irrigation season because the canals are wet and full of water. But uh, we would be able to take them excess flows the rest of the year. And, uh, and we're looking at possibly putting in some recharge cells along these canals. So, when, so if there are some excess flows coming down more so than what the canals can handle, we would have a place to, to store some of that water for future recharge and it would come back to the river at a later date. Um, I guess that wasn't quite my last slide. But you can see the difference in the canals in, in 1928, what their hidden works look like. When we come in in 2012 and started working for them, um, the canals were, were in fairly tough shape. Um, they were struggling financially, hadn't done very much maintenance the last, uh, the last few years. And, um, and to be quite honest with you, they approached us about working with them. Um, and in the end, it worked out best for, I think, us and them. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Question for Linda? Yeah, Dave. Y yes. How, how and where they, they were all reassigned within the service area of that of that canal company. So they have another acre they were attached to? Yes, all of them were attached acres. So that they can go back at the end of the lease. Right, right. And that does get touchy as you move forward because we had quite a few acres transferred back to us at one time and, and you've got to be careful because wherever you place them, you've got to be able to service them if they ever want water, which you're more than well aware of. So um, that does become an issue when you're placing them acres. Any questions for Linda? Okay, Linda Freeman.